This program is going to look at a couple of trends dealing with metal and non-metallic oxides, and in particularly those from row number three in our periodic table, moving from sodium across to chlorine oxide. I want to look at two particular properties. One is the bonding, and the second is the acid-base character. Let's start by taking a look at the bonding involved. And to do that, I'm going to look at the difference in electronegativity of our species. So first off, sodium oxide. So their electronegativity values we can see are quite far apart. And if we look at the difference in electronegativity of the sodium oxide, um, that comes out to be about 2.5. Moving to the other end of the table with chlorine and oxygen, the difference in electronegativity between these two species is about 0.2. So we move from something that is considered to be highly ionic in nature to something which is essentially purely covalent. And en route, there must be some sort of transition. And that actually happens about here, where we move from species which are here mostly ionic to then this group over here, which are considered to be mostly covalent. A second trend I want to look at deals with the acid-base character. On the far left end, sodium oxide when mixed with water is very basic or highly basic. Moving across to chlorine oxide mixed with water, we get something that's highly acidic. And again, a point of transition. Well, in this case, that transition happens here at aluminum oxide. It is both acidic and basic. The word we use for that is amphoteric. Now, we need to understand a couple of reactions or be able to demonstrate a couple of reactions, first of all, from this end. So let's look at what happens with sodium oxide, um, let's say solid, and we mix that with water. The products of that particular reaction are two sodium hydroxide, and that would be dissolved in water. The presence of the hydroxide is considered to be the basic particle. Magnesium oxide um, mixed with our water. And that's going to produce magnesium hydroxide. Again, the presence of the hydroxide suggesting a base. And um, to balance this one off, I believe we're already balanced. Now we do need to know uh, an example of a highly acidic situation. So let's take a look at what happens with sulfur trioxide when we mix that with water. Sulfur trioxide is a gas. When mixed with RH2O liquid, we end up making H2SO4, or sulfuric acid aqueous. And there is one other we need to know from the non-metal side is carbon dioxide gas mixed with water, and that produces carbonic acid. Let's take a look at a little bit of the environmental effects associated particularly with these acidic reactions. Firstly, sulfur oxides, which essentially are produced through the burning of coal, to produce electricity. Sulfur is an impurity present in the coal. That sulfur mixes with oxygen to produce sulfur dioxide. That sulfur dioxide is capable of reacting with water 
to produce what's called sulfurous acid. In another set of reactions, we can take two sulfur dioxides and mix those with um, our water, with our oxygen, and that can then make sulfur trioxide. And then as demonstrated earlier, we can take sulfur trioxide and combine it with water to make the other oxyacid of sulfur, in this case, sulfuric acid. Nitrogen oxides also contribute to the acidity of acid deposition. And let's look at how they're formed. Um, first off, where they come from, they're sort of a byproduct of the internal combustion engine. So we have nitrogen gas combining with two oxygens to make nitrogen dioxide. That nitrogen dioxide then can react with water and that can produce both nitric acid, HNO3, and nitrous acid. HNO2. Again, nitrogen oxide is an example of a non-metal oxide, which as we saw earlier, tend to produce acids. And finally, um, ocean acidification. Now, this is carbon dioxide, essentially its source. It tends to be natural. Um, in that it's a byproduct of respiration. So as a result, rain is naturally mildly acidic because of carbon dioxide dissolved in it, but we also have the combustion of fossil fuels, which puts it in excess. Carbon dioxide gas can then react with H2O liquid and produce, as mentioned earlier, carbonic acid. This carbonic acid can then undergo further reactions. So the carbonic acid can essentially break apart and form the hydrogen ion and the bicarbonate ion. So this essentially can be considered an acidic particle. And then this can further dissociate. So the bicarbonate produces a second hydrogen and the carbonate ion again, producing more acidic particles.